delayed release dimethyl fumarate, DMF, effective in relapsing, remitting multiple sclerosis, RRMS. In the early stages of multiple sclerosis, autoreactive lymphocytes gain access to the central nervous system, initiating a cascade of events leading to demethylation, axonal transaction, and neurodegeneration. Therefore, the disease should be treated at the early stages. Inflammation and neurodegenerative processes are prominent in the early stages of the disease, so agents with putative dual anti-inflammatory and neuroprotective effects, such as dimethyl fumarate, may be particularly helpful in the management of the disease. The objective of the study was to evaluate delayed release dimethyl fumarate in newly diagnosed relapsing, remitting multiple sclerosis patients. The study was a randomized, controlled open label trial. The proportion of patients relapsed was derived using Kaplan Meier analysis and analyzed with the use of a Cox proportional hazards model. Total 678 patients were included in the study, among which 223 patients were treated with placebo, 221 patients were administered dimethyl fumarate 240 mg twice a day, and 234 patients were treated with dimethyl fumarate 240 mg thrice a day. Patients who had been diagnosed with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis within one year before starting the study, and patients who were naive to multiple sclerosis disease modifying therapy, were included in the study. The study subjects were approximately 18 to 55 years. Patients receiving Glatiramor acetate and patients without multiple sclerosis were excluded in the study. Patients were selected according to inclusion and exclusion criteria. The patients were treated with placebo delayed release dimethyl fumarate 240 mg twice a day and delayed release dimethyl fumarate 240 mg thrice a day. The patients were evaluated for different parameters after 12 weeks and 2 years. On the basis of kaplan meier estimates, the proportion of patients relapsed at 2 years was 0.42 in the placebo group, 0.21 in the delayed release dimethyl fumarate twice a day group, and 0.21 in the delayed release dimethyl fumarate thrice a day group representing relative reductions of 54% in twice-a-day group, and 57% in thrice-a-day group. The p-value in both the groups was less than 0.0001, versus placebo. On the basis of kaplan meier estimates, the proportion of patients with confirmed 12-week disability progression at 2 years was greater in placebo group when compared to delayed release dimethyl fumarate twice a day group and dimethyl fumarate thrice a day group. The mean number of new or enlarging T2 hyperintense lesions at 2 years was greater in the placebo group, that is 20 when compared to delayed release dimethyl fumarate twice a day group and dimethyl fumarate thrice a day group. The adjusted mean number of new Non-enhancing T1 hyperintense lesions at 2 years was greater in the placebo group, that is 6.6, .6, when compared to delayed release dimethyl fumarate twice a day group and dimethyl fumarate thrice a day group. The study suggests strong treatment efficacy of delayed release dimethyl fumarate in patients with newly diagnosed relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. It also supports the use of delayed release dimethyl fumarate as an oral treatment option in a broad spectrum of patients with relapsing multiple sclerosis.